Chapter 2. The Cow Believers, give from what we have provided for you before the last day comes, the day when there is no bargaining or friendship or means for a disbeliever's intercession. They are the ones who have wronged themselves for taking gods other than him. He is God, there is no God but him, the ever-watchful, the ever-living. He is never distracted from being in control of affairs. All things in the heavens and earth are his possession. Who but those God grants to do so will have the power of intercession. He knows people's affairs in this life and the hereafter, what lies in front of them and behind them, and they do not comprehend any of his knowledge except for what he allows them to comprehend. His throne extends over the heaven and earth. He does not tire in preserving them. He is the most high. He is the tremendous the one you'll all be returned to again. There is no compulsion in religion. Helpers of Medina, do not force your sons to convert to Islam. Guidance is now clear from error, so whoever believes in God has taken the firmest of handles in hand. Whoever rejects false gods and declares there is no God but God has a trust that will never break. God is all-hearing and all-knowing. He knows each person's sincerity and their heart's true state. God is the ally of those who believe. He brings them from darkness into light, whereas the disbelievers are led into darkness and then the fire by their false gods and their evil allies. Prophet, have you not thought about Nimrod, who disputed with Abraham? God had given him power to rule, but he became an arrogant man. And Abraham said, My Lord is the one who gives life, and it is he who takes it away. And Nimrod said, I can do this too and he brought out two prisoners, killed one and let the other remain. And he claimed, see, I have given life by sparing this prisoner and taken it by killing the other man. And Abraham said, my Lord makes the sun rise from the east, so bring it from the west if you can. But Nimrod was dumbfounded, realizing the challenge was something he could not do. God does not guide those who do evil to him, but he is the one they will be returned to. Or consider Ezra, who passed by the holy house in Jerusalem and said, How will God give the dead life again? So God made him die for a hundred years, then raised him up once more, saying, How long have you been lying there? And he said, A day or part of a day? To which God replied, No, look at the bones of your donkey. You have stayed a hundred years in that way. And he was shocked to see his donkey had died, and all that was left were its bones instead. And God said, But look at your food and drink, they have not gone bad. We will make you a sign of resurrecting the dead. Look at the bones, see how we bring them together, and then we clothe them in flesh once more. And Ezra said, Now I know God has power over everything, as he watched the donkey be raised and reformed. Or consider Abraham who asked the Lord, Show me how you will revive the dead. And the Lord said, Do you not believe? Abraham answered, Indeed, I believe, but I wish to ease my heart, and to know my prayer will be answered. The Lord said, Take four birds of different types, cut them up, and put them on different hills. Then call to them, and they will fly to you and reform. Nothing is beyond God. He is mighty, and does as he wills. And Abraham did as his Lord commanded, but kept the birds' heads. And at his call, the other parts of the dead birds came to him and all the parts rejoined the head, and Abraham saw all the parts recombining. Those who spend their wealth in God's cause are like grains of corn that produce seven ears, on each there is seven hundred grain. God will multiply and increase to whoever he wishes. He is limitless. Any who spend sincerely will surely gain. Those who spend their wealth in God's cause and refrain from boasting and hurtful words, they'll have the reward with their Lord. They'll have no fear nor will they grieve when the life of the paradise occurs. A kind word and forgiveness is better than charitable works followed by hurtful words indeed. God is self-sufficient and forbearing. Believers do not through such arrogance cancel out your good deeds. Like anyone who spreads his wealth only to be seen by people, not really believing in God and the last day. Such a person is like a rock with earth upon it. Heavy rain falls leaving it bare. The rain washes the earth away. Such people get no reward for their work. God does not guide the disbelievers to him. But those who spend their wealth to please God do a deed that is faith-affirming.
They are like a garden on a hill that heavy rain falls upon, increasing the yield that comes from it, and if no rain were to fall, the dew would still water it. Likewise, God will reward the believers as he sees fit. God sees all that you do. Would you like to have gardens graced with all manners of plants and trees and streams, only to watch it waste away, as you only had feeble children who could not look after it, nor could you tend to it due to your old age? Such is the comparison of the disbelievers. They had a chance to believe and do good in the life they were in, but instead they chose to choose to disbelieve and found themselves in hell, regretting their disbelief and sin. God makes his messages clear to you so that you may reflect upon them. Believers give charitably from the good you have acquired and what from the earth we have given. Do not give away bad things that you yourself would only accept with disdain. Remember that God is self-sufficient and worthy of all praise. Satan threatens you with the prospect of poverty and thus commands you to do foul deeds, but God has already mentioned that he will test you with loss of wealth and loss of security. God promises you his forgiveness and abundance. He is all-knowing and limitless. He gives wisdom to whoever he wills. He knows who will succeed and who will transgress. Whoever has been given wisdom has been given much good. Those with insight bear this in mind. Whatever you give or vow to give, God knows well, and he will reward you with something better in kind. But those who do evil and take other gods, they will have no one to protect them from the regret to come. If you give in charity openly, that's good, but privately is better. God is the all-aware, the one. And if you give of charity in secret, it will atone for some of your bad deeds. And prophet, it is not for you to guide the disbelievers. You only warn, you cannot make them believe. You wish to give charity to them, as an incentive for them to embrace Islam. But I have stopped you from doing so. God guides who he wills and the fire will be filled with jinn and man. Whatever charity you give benefits your soul, provided you do it for God's sake alone. You will not be wronged. Whatever you give will be repaid in full to you in the final home. Give to those who are needy, those who believe and are fully occupied in God's way. Give to the ones who cannot travel the land and thus cannot engage themselves in trade. The unknowing might think them wealthy because they do not beg. They are the ones who show restraint, and you will know them from their humility. God is well aware of any good you give their way. Those who give from their own possessions, in public and private, by day and night, they need not fear and will not grieve. They will have the best of ends in the next life. But the one who takes usury will be raised on the day, tormented by Satan's influence over him, because he is the one who says trade and usury are the same. There is no difference between them. But God has allowed trade and forbidden usury, interest on interest, and whoever hears and takes heed, on hearing God's warning, God will judge them accordingly, and in the next life they will not fear, they will not grieve. But whoever persists in usury will be an inhabitant of the fire, and there they will remain. God curses usury, but blesses charity, with multiple increase, if given sincerely in his name. God does not love the ungrateful sinner, but those who gave the prescribed alms and steadfastly pray, they will have a reward with their Lord. They will not need to grieve or fear. In the garden they will remain. You who believe, beware of God. Give up usurious transactions that you are due. Follow the Lord and what he commands. Do not mock revelation if you are believers sincere and true. If you do not desist of such actions, then be warned of a war from God and his messenger indeed. But if you repent, you'll have your original amounts and won't have taken from others unjustly. If a debtor is in difficulty, then delay things until they become easier for him. But if you write off the debt altogether, that is better for you, if only you knew the blessings contained therein. Beware the day when you'll be returned to God, and all will be judged by him, and every soul will be repaid for what it has earned. None will be wronged. God accounts for everything. You who believe when you contract a debt payable by a fixed date, make sure a scribe justly writes down all the details that both parties state. No scribe should refuse to write. Let him write as God has taught him to. Let the debtor dictate and keep God his Lord in mind and not diminish what the loaner is due. 
If the debtor is feeble-minded, unable to dictate or weak, then his guardian will outline the details and let the guardian justly speak. Call two righteous men as witnesses to the event, or one man and two righteous women instead, in case one errs or forgets, the other can a reminder of what was said. Women are equal to men and vice versa, but they are not the same. God has given men responsibility over women. God's words will never change. Do not refrain from writing down the amount of debt, small or large, and write the date it's due. This is more righteous in God's eyes, more reliable, and more likely to prevent doubts arising between you. If you are actualizing a sale, and the merchandise in question is there, you do not need to write it down, though still have witnesses present when you trade with one another and ensure the transaction is sound. Make sure no harm comes to the witnesses or the scribe. If you cause harm, the sin of it falls on you. Be mindful of God and he will show you the way. He has full knowledge of everything you do. If you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe, something should be handed over in security. The creditor should take a pledge from the debtor, unless the creditor trusts the debtor completely. Let the one who is trusted keep his word. He must be mindful of God his Lord. Do not conceal evidence of transactions. Those who do have a sinful heart that is flawed. Whatever is in the heavens and earth belongs to God. Whether you reveal or conceal your thoughts, God will call you to account for them. And if you think a bad thing, but refrain from doing it, it is a good deed. But if you think of a good deed and do it, the reward is multiplied by ten. And if you think an evil deed and act upon it, then it counts as a single deed. And know all deeds can multiply, and hence Cain accrues more sin for every erroneous killing committed by any of humanity. As he was the one to commit the first murder amongst humans, when he killed his brother without right, they were both the sons of Adam, so believers, keep the possible effect of your deeds in mind. God will forgive or punish whoever he wills. He has power over all things. The messenger and the faithful believe in the Quran, the Quran that Gabriel brings. They believe in God and his angels, the scriptures, messengers, and between the messengers they make no distinction. And They say, Lord, we hear and we obey. Lord, to you will return. Grant us your forgiveness. God does not burden a soul with more than it can bear. Each will gain the good or suffer the bad it has done. And believers say, Lord, do not take us to task if we forget or make mistakes. Lord, do not place upon us burden. Lord, do not burden us as you burden those before us. Do not burden us with more than we have strength to bear. Pardon and forgive and have mercy on us. Help us against the disbelievers. You are our protector. You are the all aware. Chapter 3. The Family of Imran I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Alif Lam Mim Letters of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what they refer to and mean, but the respected scholar Ibn Abbas explained it could be that this is an oath from God, swearing he is one, without partner or progeny. God, there is no God but him, the ever-watchful, the ever-living, almighty Lord. Piece by piece he has sent down the Qur'an to you, confirming the scriptures that came before. He sent down the Torah and the Gospel as a guide for people. He sent scripture to give distinction between righteous actions and erroneous deeds in all previous scriptures and in this one. Those who deny God's revelations will suffer torment. God is mighty and capable of it indeed. Nothing in heaven and earth is hidden from God. He shaped you in the womb at his decree. There is no God but him, the mighty, the wise. It is he who sends down the scripture to you. Some of its verses are definitive in meaning. They are the foundation of the scripture we have sent through. Other verses are more ambiguous. They present issues through comparisons and allegory, and the perverse at heart seek to pursue the ambiguous, to confuse others and argue issues maliciously. Only God knows the true meaning of such verses. And those firmly grounded in knowledge say, We believe in this Qur'an, it is all from our Lord. Such people are wise, and not of those astray. Only those with real perception will take heed, saying, Lord, now that we have accepted faith, 
Grant us your mercy, you are ever giving. Now that you have guided us, do not let us deviate. Lord, you will gather us all, on the day of which there is no doubt. God never breaks his promise. What he has decreed will surely come about. The disbeliever's children and their possessions will be of no use to them against the Lord. Just like Pharaoh's people and their predecessors, they are fuel for the fire that lies in store. All of them denied our revelations, and God punished them for their sins. He is the all-powerful, almighty. He is severe when punishing. Prophet, say to the disbelievers, you will be defeated and taken to hell, a terrible resting place. You have already seen a sign of your losses when the disbelievers at Badr fought those firm in faith. The disbelievers were pleased their numbers were more, but God helps those who he wills indeed. There is truly a lesson in the believer's victory for those with eyes to see. The love of fine things is alluring to men. They wish for women, children, silver and gold piled high. Horses of the finest stock and farmland too, all considered the joys of this life. But God has the best place to return to. He is the all-knowing and almighty. Say, prophet, shall I tell you of something to strive for, far better than all of these? The Lord will give those mindful of him, gardens graced with flowing streams, where they will stay with pure spouses and have God's pleasure for all of eternity. God is fully aware of his servants. They are the ones who say, Lord, we believe, so forgive us our sins and protect us from suffering in the fire in any way. They are the ones who are steadfast. They are truthful and devout. They are the ones who give in God's cause and pray at night for forgiveness before the sun comes out. God bears witness there is no God but him, as do the angels and those with knowledge indeed. He upholds justice. There is no other God but him. He is the wise and almighty. True religion in God's eyes is submission, devotion to him alone, and of the previous people given scripture, they only differed out of rivalry when the truth was known. God could have made them all one nation, but they chose to put their pride and arrogance first. And as for those who deny God's revelations, he is swift to take account of those whose deeds are worst. Prophet, if the disbelievers argue with you, say, I have submitted to my Lord, and my followers have submitted like me. Ask those with scripture and those without, will you devote yourselves to him alone and truly? If they do, they will be guided but they should know that if they turn away, God is aware of his servants, and your task is not to convert them. You simply have a message to convey. Give them news of agonizing torment. It is for those who ignore God's revelations and the prophet slayers and enemies of justice from amongst them and previous nations. The deeds of such people will come to nothing. In this world and the next, they'll have no one to help them, and they'll be judged for all they've done when return to God again. Have you not seen those of Medina's Jews given some scripture and what they asked of you? Two of their people had fornicated, and the punishment in the Torah outlined stoning was due. And then they came to see you, Muhammad, as they wished you to give a ruling in the case, and you judged in accordance with their law that fornicators should be stoned, but then the askers turned away. They did not want to carry out the verdict, but the Torah was brought out to show them, and even though they saw that this was God's law, they refused to carry out the punishment once again. And some then declared they could ignore the Torah, saying the fire will only touch us for a few days. These are lies that they themselves invented. They have led themselves astray. How will they fare upon the day of which there is no doubt when each soul is repaid in full? For all they have done, and none will be wronged. God is all-knowing and all-merciful. And when Muhammad promised his followers they'd rule over Byzantium and Persia, the hypocrites cried out, This is a preposterous claim indeed, so prophet tell them that which the Lord decrees will surely come about. Say God is the sovereign, God is the king. He will give control to whoever he wills indeed, and removes it from whoever he chooses, and will elevate or humble as he please. All that is good lies in God's hands. He provides limitlessly as he wills. He has power over everything. 
It is he who merges the night to day and day to night, brings the living from the dead and dead from the living. The believers should not make the disbelievers allies over believers seeking might and honour from them. Anyone who does so pulls away from God. God warns you to beware of him. To him you'll return again. Say, Prophet, God knows everything in your hearts, whether you conceal or reveal what dwells in them. He knows all in the heavens and earth. He has power over all things. To him is the return again. On the day, each soul will see the good and bad deeds it has done in a record, and they'll wish their bad deeds were far away. God warns you to beware of him, but he is compassionate towards his servants. So Muhammad say, If you love God, follow me, and God will love you and forgive your sins. God is the most merciful. God is the wise. God is the most forgiving. Say, Obey God and the messenger, and know that if they turn away, God does not love those who ignore his commands. Such people are truly astray. And when some Jews heard this, they said, We follow the religion of Adam, so to God we are Muslims submitting. God chose Adam, Noah and Abraham's family and the family of Imran over all others in one line descending. Prophet Imran was the forefather of Moses and Aaron. The line of prophethood came through them and a later prophet, Imran, had a wife, Hannah, who made a supplication when she found out she was pregnant. She said, Lord, I dedicate what is growing in my womb entirely to you. Accept this from me. You hear and see all. To you, all praise is due. And when she gave birth, she was surprised to find it was a female that she'd conceived. But God already knew. He is the knower of all things, what gender the child would be. They were expecting to have a son, as males took on more responsibility. And God said, the male is not like the female. So Hannah said, I will name her Mary. And I ask you, Lord, to protect her and her offspring from Satan, the outcast, the rejected one. Her Lord accepted her request and made Mary grow in goodness under Zachariah's charge and protection. Mary grew up in a sanctuary, and whenever Zachariah went to her, he found she had provisions. So he asked, Mary, how is it you've come across these supplies? By whom have they been given? Mary said, they are from God. He provides limitlessly for whoever he wills indeed. And in an instant, Zachariah prayed, Lord, you hear every prayer. Grant righteous offspring to me. And then the angels called out to him when he was in the sanctuary while he prayed, saying, God gives you news of a son. John, who will confirm Jesus being the word of God, and he will be noble and chaste. He will be one of the prophets and be one of the righteous. He will not go astray. And Zechariah said, How can we have a child when I am barren and my wife has succumbed to old age? The angel said, It will be so. It is easy for God. Whatever God wills, God will do. So he said, Lord, give me a sign to know when the start of my wife's pregnancy is due. And God replied through the angel, You will not communicate with anyone for three days except through signalling, and remember your Lord often, glorify him in the morning and evening. And the angel said to Mary, God has chosen you and made you pure, chosen you over other women indeed. Be devout, prostrate in worship, and bow down with those who pray obediently. This is all an account of things beyond your knowledge, Muhammad. You were not present for these events. Nor were you present when the rabbis drew lots after arguing which of them would teach her best. The rabbis all felt they should be her ward, so to settle the dispute they threw quills in the water and agreed whoever's quill remained afloat the longest would be the one who would take on the responsibility. The angel said, Mary, God gives you the news of a word from him, your son. Jesus will be his name. He will be the Messiah and in this world and the next, he will be honoured and held in high praise. He will speak in his infancy and as an adult. He will be of the righteous ones. But Mary said, My Lord, no man has ever touched me. How can I have a son? Through the angel, God said, This is how God creates what he wills. He simply has to say to something be, and that will bring it into creation. That thing will come about 
most definitely. Jesus will teach the scripture and impart wisdom. He'll teach the Torah and the gospel, and he'll be sent as a messenger to the children of Israel. He'll say, I have come to you with a sign from God. With his permission, I will take this bird of clay, and I will breathe into it, make it a real bird, and I'll heal the blind and lepers as God has ordained. And I will bring the dead back to life with God's permission, and I will tell you what you may eat and what you may store. There is truly a sign in this if you are believers. I have come to confirm the truth of the Torah that came before. And I have come to make some things lawful, which were previously forbidden to you. And I have come with a sign from God, so obey me. God is my Lord and your Lord too. Serve him, that is the straight path. But when he realized they remained firm in their disbelief, he said, who will help me in God's cause? And the disciples said, we will be God's helpers, in God we do believe. Witness our devotion to him. Lord, we believe in what you have revealed, and we follow the messenger too. Record us, Lord, amongst the righteous, those who bear witness and follow the truth. And the disbelievers schemed to have Jesus killed, but God had a plan. He raised Jesus up to him. God is surely the best of planners. He put Jesus' likeness onto another man, Tatianos, who suffered the crucifixion. As God had said, Jesus, I will take you up to me before death and keep you from those who disbelieve, and until the day of resurrection, I'll make your monotheistic followers superior to the deniers indeed. And when you are all returned to me, I will make clear the differences in issues of which you all argued, and no one will be able to help the disbelievers, for them terrible punishment will be due. God does not love those who do evil, but those who believe and do good deeds will have their reward for their righteous actions and steadfast practice. For them the paradise lies in store. Muhammad, this Qur'an is a decisive statement that we relate to you and know that to God, Jesus is just like Adam. Both were created from him saying be and both were created from dust too. This is indeed the truth from your Lord. Do not be one of those who doubt. And if any dispute with you, now that this knowledge has come about, say, Come, let us gather our sons and your sons, your women, our women, you and ourselves too, and pray sincerely for God's rejection to fall down on whichever religion is not true. The fact of the matter is, there is no God but God. He is the exalted, and he is the decider. And if they turn away, God knows who corrupts this religion. He is the all-knowing provider. Say, Muhammad, people of the book, let us come to a statement which we can all agree upon. We worship God alone, ascribe him no partner, take no other gods. He is the only one. And if any of them turn away, say, witness our devotion to him. God is the one true God, beyond compare. He has power over everything. People of the book, why do you argue about Abraham when the Torah and gospel were sent after him? So how could he have been a Jew or a Christian? He could not have had your laws. Have you no understanding? You argue about things of which you have some knowledge and argue of that of which you know nothing. God knows and you do not. You call Abraham a Jew or a Christian, but he was no such thing. He was of the upright, devoted to God. He never engaged in idolatry. And of those closest to him are Muhammad and the believing followers as they act similarly. God is close to true believers, but some of the people of the book would love you to go astray, but it is only themselves that they mislead, but they do not realize that they have chosen the erroneous way. People of the book, why do you deny this Quran when you can see it is true? People of the book, why do you engage in falsehood and mix it with the truth? They would try to twist the description of Muhammad and say he was the Antichrist, falsifying scripture, distorting it, concealing the truth, spreading falsehood and lies. Why do you hide the truth when you recognize it? Some of the people of the book to their followers said, we'll pray the afternoon prayer in the Muslim's direction and in the end of the day, pray in the old direction instead. This way the believers will be filled with doubt as they will think we are knowledgeable ones. And if we reject their religion after we seem to accept it, 
their faith in this religion would be undone. They will say the Jews are wise. They would surely know whether or not Islam is true. But Muhammad do not believe in anyone unless he follows the same religion as you. Prophets say, true guidance is God's guidance. Do not believe the disbelievers who say, no one could have been given revelation but us. They think they will argue with you before God on judgment day. Tell them, all bounties are in God's hands. He gives to who he wills. He is encompassing and wise. He gives of his mercy to whoever he will. His grace is never ending. He is the Almighty, the High. There are people of the book who you could truly trust to keep mountains of riches safe. But there are others who take it all and never wish to return it. And the excuse that they would say is we are under no obligation to the Gentiles. This is a terrible lie they tell. They think they are allowed to be unjust to those of different religions and say God gave them permission to act in such a way as well. No, indeed. God loves those who keep their pledges, those who are mindful of him. But terrible punishment awaits those who ignore God's word for some other small and petty thing. God will not speak to such people or look at them when the day of resurrection comes. He will not forgive them of their sins. They will have agonizing punishment. They twist the scripture with their tongues to make people think part of what they say is indeed from scripture. But what they say is not true. They lie, attributing their falsehoods to God, and they know it well. For them, the punishment is due. Some of the Christians claim that Jesus ordered them to take him as a divining lord. And some believers ask you, Muhammad, can we prostrate to you like they do to Jesus, kneeling on the floor? But no person to whom we had given scripture and prophethood would ever command such a thing. They'd say instead, devote yourselves to God and use what you know of the scripture that you've been studying. He would never command you to take angels or prophets as lords. He would urge you to God indeed. How could he command you? after you have devoted yourselves to God, to return in any way to idolatry. God took a pledge from the prophets, saying, If a messenger after you comes, given wisdom and scripture too, you must believe in and accept his message. Will you affirm this and accept my pledge as binding on you? They agreed, indeed we do. So God said, Then bear witness to each other's words, and I will bear witness also. Those who turn from this are of those who break pledges. They are of the wicked, and God has all control. The Jews and the Christians dislike the ruling you have given when you say they have gone astray. But are they trying to truly serve God, or are they seeking other than following God's way? Everything in heaven and earth submits to him, willingly or unwillingly, and they'll all be returned to him and be rewarded for their belief and deeds accordingly. Say, Muhammad, we Muslims believe in God, and what was sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Jacob and the tribes. We believe in what was sent to Moses and Jesus, and all the prophets the Lord has sent, we affirm and testify. We make no distinction between any of the prophets, and we devote ourselves to the Lord. And if any seeks a way of life other than Islam, devotion to God, they'll be of those rejected and scorned. They will be of the losers in the hereafter. Why would God guide people who deny what is true, after they believed and acknowledged the messenger and had been shown clear proof. God does not guide the evildoers. God and the angels will reject them. They'll be sent to hell, there to remain, with no relief or break in their suffering. Not so the ones who repent and mend their ways. God is merciful and forgiving. But those who believe and then turn away and increase their disbelief will have the fire to dwell in. They are the ones who have gone astray, and those who die as disbelievers will not be saved. Even if they offered enough gold to cover the entire earth, it would not be accepted in exchange. Debilitating torment lies in wait for them, and none will help them in any way. None of you believers will attain true piety unless you give of what you cherish. God is all-knowing in every way.